let's go and take a look at this problem, guys. Now, this isn't a problem we covered last class period, um, but you know we've covered identities, right? We spent two days covering identities, yes? So you guys should be fairly familiar to seeing identities and saying, oh, if I see an identity, or if I see a function that I can apply an identity, that's what I'm going to do. So here I have cotangent of pi f minus theta, and I think that looks like my cofunction identities that I had written on the board and in my notes, right? So when I take off my hat, I think about what are the functions, right? You can think of, remember, cofunction identities, the way that I explain cofunction identities is think of them like transformations of graphs. Like what functions, when you transform them, look just very similar to each other? Sine and cosine, those are cofunctions of each other. Cosecant and secant are cofunctions of each other. And tangent and cotangent. So this can be rewritten as tangent of theta equals negative 3 over 3. Okay. Now again, we're trying to solve. We're trying to find the solutions that make it true. I will do two cases. I will do a, which will be between 0 and 2 pi. And then I'll do um, b, which will be all solutions. Now, if we just want to find between 0 and 2 pi, that's like the unit circle. right? So all we really need to know is, what is the unit circle? Or what are the coordinate points when I take tangent, which if you recall, is y over x. Like, when is it when I take y over x, do I get square root of 3 over 3? Now, again, this is negative, but let's just deal with the positive for a second. Hopefully, at this point, you guys blink and you do a reflex and you say, oh, I know what that is. It is the coordinate, it is the angle, pi over 6. When I take pi over 6, when I take my y coordinate over my x coordinate, which is tangent, I get square root of 3 over 3. I don't have time to do the algebra. That was last chapter. We've already done this over and over and over again, right? So, you guys should know that y over x, which is tangent of pi over 6, gives you square root of 3 over 3. However, guys, that's positive. This equation wants negative. So, that means the angle has to be in the third, or sorry, second and fourth quadrant. The reference angle is the same, it's still pi over 6. So, we know halfway around the circle is pi, but if we're pi over 6 short, that means our first solution is pi over 6 short of pi is? 5 pi over 6. And then we could say, and then our other solution is um, pi over 6 short of 2 pi, which is 12 pi over 6, which is 11 pi over 6. OK, so that's the solutions between 0 and 2 pi. If I wanted you to find all the solutions, we basically need to think about, now, to, like I didn't explain this last class period, so I think this is a good way to understand tangent. Remember, guys, tangent graph looks like this, right? Yes? How often does tangent repeat? Pi, like, pretend like we're looking for like the zeros of like just tangent of x. Like, how, what is the distance between these solutions? No. How far is it, guys, between each of these solutions? Pi. That's the period, right? It's pi. The period has now been changed to pi. So we obviously have different solutions. We're looking for when the angle is negative square root of 3 over 3. It's a little bit different. But again, you guys can see that the solutions repeat every pi. And again, that's obvious when you look at this graph. Every pi, I come to a solution, right? So the way to write this is you could write both of these solutions plus pi n if you wanted to. Um, or you could write both solutions plus 2 pi n. But really, the simplified solution is just to write the smallest positive angle plus pi n, where again, n represents empty integer, negative or positive. And again, let's check this. 5 pi over 6 is right here. From here, could I add or subtract pi, and then I would keep on getting my solutions? Yes. So there we go. Anybody have any questions on that one? Yes. Nope, can't do 